Hey, so in, we're, we're continuing on in Vectary. We're starting to get a little bit more intermediate. We've worked with sub-objects a little bit, so I'm going to review that. It was a lesson from a long time ago. So if I double-click on this sphere, it gives me an option to bake it, which I do want to bake it. And now I have all of these editable points. So if I zoom in on this, if I click on a face, I can hit delete on my keyboard, and I deleted a face. Or if I want to click on um, a vertice, I do have to click on this button down here that says select vertices. It's like a little dot. And now I can access these vertex and I can drag them out. Or if I want to indent something, I always say drag out, but you don't always have to drag outward. You can drag inward as well. So um, you can modify. And then this one, if, of course, is for edges. If I just want to mess with an edge, um, I can pull edges out as well. So we worked with sub, sub objects a long time ago, but what if I want to do something with all of these faces that are up here at the top? And there's a lot of them. And so just for the sake of a demonstration to make this a little bit easier, I'm interested in showing you how to reduce the amount of segments that there are in an object. Um, this is a lot to play with. Sometimes I don't need this many, although I will say this helps get the shape of the sphere a little bit more rounded and even. So I'm going to get out of this exit mode and we're going to explore a little bit more on this red sphere, kind of give it a little bit of a stem. So if I double click on this object, oops, I'm already made a mistake. I'm going to undo. Let's cancel. Before I bake the object, I'm, in I'm interested in making some changes to it. In fact, let me make a whole new sphere. So I'm going to add a sphere. I want it to be red like an apple. I have my apple. And before I even um, go to bake, I'm going to change the radius and the height segments. So I'm going to reduce them down pretty, pretty much. I'm going to do about 16 and I'll do 15. And you can already see that the shape is less spherical. It's a little bit more jagged, but if I double click on it, what that allows me to do is work with a lot less segments than that last shape had. And at the top of it, I'm interested in taking these at the top, these faces, and making them into like the stem if this was an apple. So I could, an apple isn't a perfect shape, so I might want to indent it for dents in the apple or some um, malformations in the apple. Um, but it's the, it's the top that I'm interested in. So I'm going to flip this to faces because I want to select all these faces. So the first thing I'm going to go in here and do is I'm using my mouse wheel to zoom in. I want to select all of these faces. And imagine if I had like 64 faces that would take some time to select them all. So I'm going in here and trying to select all these faces. Now I have them all selected and I'm interested in two tools. First is the bevel and the bevel, I can bevel the inside, which makes some, some distance between this face and this face, which I don't want in this case. I just want the bevel tool to bring in a little gap between this edge that was here and make a little gap there because in the next, next button over is extrude and that will allow me to, oops, I'm sorry, I'm zoomed in too far, pull up on this, it, that little gap is needed so that I can pull up and make the stem. And then from here, I can grab more faces and maybe put them on an angle or, or do something to help continually make the stem. But this is a real fast tutorial on a couple things, reducing the amount of faces, uh, segments on an object, and you can do this for any object, sphere, cylinder. We also learned how to create a little gap in our faces so that I can pull and start making a new object. But this is all one unit. It's not two separate units. It's not a sphere and a cylinder. It's all one unit at this point. And sometimes modeling, you want to use, um, create objects that are a solid.